Hey everyone, this is James from mkiaudio.tk and today I have a quick video for you um, to talk a little bit about pre-fader and post-fader sounds. Uh, you can see here I have a drum overhead track um, set up here on the left hand side and on the right hand side I have created an aux track. Now at the minute there's nothing running through this aux track, there's no input to it at all. So to get sound running through this, we need to create a send from our original drum overhead track. So to do this in PreSonus Studio One, you click the little plus sign here, and you'll see our aux track appears in the drop down menu, which I've labeled drum overhead double. So I click on that, and that creates a send that sends the original signal into this aux track. So, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your send level is set to zero, so you have a full volume send uh, going into your aux. To do this, you can click and drag this little um, meter here and set it to zero, but sometimes they can be hard to get exact, so you can click up here in the left hand corner, double click, and set that to zero. So now we have a full volume duplicate going to this aux track. Now, when you create a send in PreSona Studio One, it defaults to a post fader send. Um, post fader basically means that it takes, uh, it routes the signal after the fader of the main track and sends that into the aux track. Now, a pre fader send would take the signal before it hits the fader and sends it into the aux track, so it's a full volume duplicate going in. Um, I'll explain the difference by giving a few examples in a second. So at the minute it's set uh, to the default post fader um, send. So once I hit play, uh, you should hear, or you'll be able to see the volume of both tracks on the meters is exactly the same. There's no difference between them. Uh, because it's set as post fader, as I drag down the main volume level of the original track, you will notice that the level uh, coming through the aux track drops in conjunction with it. So I'll hit play and I'll drop the fader of the main track and just keep an eye on the aux track level uh, as I'm uh, dropping it down. So you can see there, as I uh, lowered the volume of the main track, the aux track volume came down uh, by the same amount. Now, if I was to change this over to pre-fader, and to do this in PreSona Studio One, you click on this little uh, emblem here, the send will turn orange, which uh, signifies that it's been t changed into a pre-fader send. So now I'll hit play, I'll do the same thing, I'll drop the volume of the main track, and the volume coming out of the aux track shouldn't change. So have a listen to that and see, just keep an eye on the meters uh, so you can monitor the volume. So you see, as I dropped down the main volume, uh, the meters on the aux track didn't change. Now, there was an audible sound difference because uh, while both of them are playing, we have basically a doubled sound, so it's going to sound louder. As you drop one of those out, the sound will sound a lot quieter, but the actual level running into the aux track hasn't changed. So, a way in which you would use a pre-fader send would be for parallel processing. So, if we go to our inserts in our aux track, and we're going to add a reverb. 
Now for the, in the interest of speed, I will just choose a preset. Uh, we'll go for an arena. So now our rocks track, anything coming into our rocks track is going to be affected by this room reverb plugin. And uh, the sound being sent out of the aux track will have a reverb uh, on it. So I will hit play to start with. I'm going to drop the fader of the aux track right down. So there's nothing coming out of the aux track to start with. So I'll hit play and I'll slowly bring the fader up on the aux track so that I can blend the two sounds together. Now, because this is a pre fader send, this aux track can be controlled independently to the main track. So I'll hit play, I'll start to blend it in and just listen to the sound um, as I'm doing it. So you can see there, um, as I was bringing the blend up, uh, I found a level I was happy with. Whenever I hit the mute button on the aux track, it went back to the dry signal. Whenever I dropped the volume of the main track down, all you were hearing was the, the aux track's reverb signal. So this is known as parallel processing. Um, quite a common one would be parallel compression. So you would swap out this uh, reverb plugin for a compressor. Um, on drums, usually you would add quite heavy compression to uh, the aux track, so you're blending in the nice dry signal, the nice clear signal with a heavily compressed signal, and it just adds a little bit more punch to the drums. So play around with sends. The best thing to do to get used to them would probably be to open up a session and experiment with them, just sending them to different buses or sending them maybe to global effects and uh, change between pre-fader and post-fader and play about with the faders then and that'll let you really come to terms of what uh, a pre-fader and a post-fader uh, send can do. So if you have any questions head over to the blog at mkaudio.tk and you can leave me any questions you have there and I'll be happy to help. But until the next video thanks for watching and please rate, comment and subscribe and share it out amongst anybody you know. Thanks for watching and I hope to get another video out soon.